Humans of the Cardboard, welcome back to Just Nuts, guys. Today, we are back with another news video. Still on vacation, heading back late tomorrow night. Um, and really excited. We got uh, a new reveal for pretty much making, like, or I guess pushing the Albaz dragons, like, even further in lore. And pretty much making it, like, an actual pure archetype. Uh, I've read one card. It kind of seems like some pretty crazy um, dragon link, almost, support. Uh, or whatever you want to call it, chaos dragons, that kind of stuff, light, start, uh, light dark dragons. Um, haven't read anything else, but it, it seems like a crazy start. Let's get into this thing. Um, uh, I won't be able to edit this, so feel free to uh, hop on to uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Organiz organization and um, you know follow along with what I'm going through here. Okay, let's get into this. Starting off first, we have Bistead Magnum Mutt. I don't know. Weird, weird names. This thing looks crazy, but this is a level six dark dragon, 25, 2000. That is big stats for a level six. You can only use both of those effects hard once per turns. You can target one light or dark monster in either graveyard. Banish it. And if you do, special summon this card from the hand. Okay, very simple. But what what's even crazier for this effect is... It's either graveyards. This is already just graveyard removal for your opponent. If um, if they're playing a deck that's light or dark, and a lot of dark uh, attribute decks use graveyard effects, so really good. This is a quick effect if your opponent controls a monster. So now this card becomes like an actual insane uh, hand trap. Your opponent's going to commit a monster to the field. That gives you essentially a DD Crow that's that banishes for cost. And you get to put a big old body that's going to immediately threaten into your opponent's board on the next turn. And to make matters worse, second effect, if this card is special summoned, you can activate this effect. Add one dragon monster from your deck or graveyard to your hand during the end phase of this turn. This card is legitimately insane. Um, wow. This seems like a crazy... And this is any dragon monster in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. This seems like an insane support card for Dragon Link. As long as we're in a format that play that is pretty heavy on lights and darks, which, let's face it, is like every format, um, this card could be crazy. So, really, really huge card for Dragon Link. That's the only card I had read so far. Next step, we have Bistead Serenir. This is another level 6 dragon. Um... Dark, 25, 2000. Again, huge stats. You can only use the first and second effect of this card, uh, this card's name each turn. First effect, you can target one lighter dark monster in your graveyard, banish it, and if you do special summon this card from your hand, this is a quick effect. Your opponent controls a monster. Same thing. They're both just like banish for cost. DD Crows on the opponent's turn if they're playing a light or dark deck. That is crazy. If this card is sent to the graveyard, generically just sent, okay, you can send one Bistead, a uh, monster except for himself or a branded spiller trap from your deck to the graveyard that's also pretty good um yeah i like that this is just send i mean we talk about how uh dragon's ravine is super accessible because of romulus in dragon decks um as well as just playing stuff like foolish burial this gives you extra targets there um again like do you and and, and as far as the first effect going second Plops on the field as an interruption from Grave, and then is just immediately a 2,500 monster that threatens your opponent. If he gets sent to Grave, you get to Foolish Burial anyway, which gives you extra, um, you know, just potential setup, and yeah, really good. Next up here, also, these are all level 6. I'm just realizing, well, these first three are all level 6, so potentially rank 6 plays. We haven't seen a ton of rank 6 monsters really come up in Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, over the years, a couple here and there, but nothing crazy, but yeah. All right, next up we have Bistead uh, Druid Worm. This one looks awesome. This is my favorite one artwork-wise so far. Same stats, level 6 dark, 25, 2,000. Again, why are they all so huge? That is crazy. Um, first effect, same thing. Target a light or dark in either grave. Banish it, special summon this. It's a quick effect if, it's your, if your opponent controls a monster, which is <laughs> insanely easy. Um, and then the second effect, if this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can target one opponent's special summoned monster, send it to the graveyard. Wow. Wow. This one's also really good. Um, I still think the first one's probably the best one. It's a little bit slow, but it is just straight up an engine searcher. Any dragon monster in the entire game of Yu-Gi-Oh! It searches, which is insanely good. 
but the other two are still solid. This one's still really, really good. Sent from field to graveyard, just, just target an opponent's special monster, send it to grave. That's really good. Going second, it's a graveyard disruption that then becomes like a removal for any extra deck monster or any special summon monster. It just applies a lot of pressure going second. These cards seem really crazy at like pushing dragons uh, to be able to go second. And like worst case scenario, they're just like chaos dragon extenders, which is great for them anyway. And then lastly, uh, oh no, sorry, we have two more monsters. I thought this was the last one. We have a, a bigger one. This is the Bisted Lubelion. So a main deck Lubelion monster. He looks crazy. He almost reminds me of, uh, what is it, Shenron from Dragon Ball Z when he gets into like the Mega Shenron, the white version of him. Really crazy. Okay, here we go. Level 8 Light Dragon, 25, 3000. Again, stats are crazy. Cannot be normal summoner set. Must be special summoned from your hand or graveyard. I like that it's graveyard also because we can foolish him with the other one. Uh, by attributing a level six or higher dark dragon monster. Six or higher dark dragon. Okay, nothing crazy. That's pretty easy to set up uh, here. Um, you can only special summon him once per turn this way. You can only use the first and second effect of this card's name once per turn. You can send this card from your hand to the graveyard to add a bistead monster from your deck to your hand. Okay, so he's just a Rota. Okay, and then he summons himself back from Grave. During the main phase, you can place one branded continuous spell or trap from your deck face up in your spell and trap zone. Okay, so like you go use him, like pitch him from hand to add one of the other Bistead monsters. As long as there's any light or dark in Grave, summon the Bistead. Then you contribute the Bistead to summon him, and then he can just get you a branded continuous spell or trap. Okay, seems pretty good. Also, the fact that he can summon from Grave just means he can come back every turn and apply pressure as just like a big body anyway that also generates you free cards. Seems decent. Not, not, not mad about that one. And then we finish up monster-wise with the Bisted Albalos. This is a dragon special summon effect. Light, level 12, 35, 35 for the stats. That is crazy high. While you can, okay, sorry, sorry. Must uh, be special summoned from hand or grave by attributing two Bistead monsters. So a little bit harder to, to get the requirement here. And it is specifically Bistead, not just dragons or anything. So keep that in mind. Here we go. While you control this summoned, uh, this card summoned this way. Negate. Let's see. Negate the effects of all Ritual, Fusion, Synchro, Exceed, and Link monsters on the field. So essentially just locked, just skill drain all monsters that aren't normal on like just regular monsters for the main deck if this face-up card you control leaves the field by an opponent's effect you can banish all face down cards in each player's extra deck face up until your opponent's end phase okay nothing too crazy it's like if they out him you kind of keep them from being able to go any further in the turn i guess which is which is good because it means like they probably have to out him with an effect and then at least it keeps them from going into the extra deck too try and set up anything uh, to be a problem for you. So not terrible there. Uh, this one seems like a cheeky boss monster. I don't know how easily applicable it's going to be or worth it in, in general, but luckily he can summon himself from grave. So if you can just, like, even if you just play him as a one of, he's an easily sendable card that summons itself, you, you know, and as long as you get the, the Bisted monsters on the field, he can kind of facilitate uh, you pretty well. So that's not terrible. And then we finish up with two continuous uh, cards, one spell, one trap. The first one is rebranded, again, continuous branded spell. So that is settable off of the first boss monster, the better one in my opinion. You can only use the first effect of this card's name once per turn. Also, uh, you can only use the second effect of this card's name once per chain. Chain, okay. First effect, if a light and or dark monster is banished. Stupid easy in this deck. Target one of them, place it on the bottom of the deck, and if you do, draw one card. Wow. Okay, so just every turn, draw a card. Also, if you banish uh, one of your own cards, you can actually just get it recycled back into the deck, so pretty good. Second effect, once per turn, when your opponent normal or special summons a monster, you can target a Bistead monster in your grave, special summon it. Wow, wow, wow. And just get free special summons every time your opponent summons each Wait, the second effect is just once per chain. So you can just reborn all day. 
Dang, this card's annoying. Okay. And the final one here is Branded Beast, a continuous trap. You can only use the second effect once per turn. Dang, that spell's actually really good. First effect, just getting you draws all day. And the second effect, not even once per turn, just once per chain, just getting you like hella bodies on the field. Okay, very cool. Uh, very good card. And the last one here is Branded Beast, Continuous Trap. Second effect's a hard once per turn. The first one says, once per turn during the main phase, so a soft once per turn. If you control a beast, a bestead monster, you can tribute a dragon to tar the card, target one card your opponent controls, destroy it. That is really... That is really nice because that's a really that's searchable off the big boss monster and then he is tributable for this effect. Second effect, during the end phase, you can target one branded continuous spell or trap and grave and place it face up on the field. So again, like just gets you resources back from grave. This card is also really good. Um, I also like the synergies with the um, the two level sixes, the Druid Worm and the Saranir um, because... Uh, with the Druid Worm, if we tribute him to pop a card, you can then use the uh, the Druid Worm to then also send another monster your opponent controls to the grave. And with Saranir, it'd be tribute him to interrupt your opponent and then um, get you a Foolish Burial for any other branded spell or trap. Really good. Um, yeah, I mean, I like it. <laughs> I think they're cool. This makes me like dragons a little bit more because this, this does feel like it could play more of a control style if you want to i don't know if that's what people will do dragons tend to tend to be more combo heavy uh dragon link being a good example of that but i guess i guess there are builds of dragon link that are more mid-range over the past couple of years so it, it really depends where people want to go with it i don't know all the synergy off the top of my head i'm not a dragon expert but these seem really really solid i think just individually all of these seem like really good cards i just have to see how they fit in with the rest of dragon stuff that we already have so um yeah really really cool i like this a lot um i'm not even a big dragon person you guys know that but um these cards are sweet um and i can't wait to see how they um they end up doing because uh, both these new archetypes from this set if you call this an yeah i'd call this a new archetype new name and there's cards with with the archetypal name this and the other archetype the uh kshatri la archetype like both seem like they could be uh, big meta effectors, um, especially with like Splite getting hit. We'll see tier elements will probably get hit in the OCG on the next ban list because they seem to be like the runaway favorite now. But it's cool. I like. I mean, we're getting core sets with a lot of impactful stuff. It's cool to see. Um, hopefully Konami keeps it up. But um, yeah, that's it for me here. Let me know in the comment section down below your thoughts on the new cards, uh, specifically uh, the synergy with stuff that already exists, whether it's branded, whether it's Dragon Link, stuff like that. Let me know your thoughts down below, and I will, um, I will catch all you guys in the next video. Peace.